the firearms industry is a passionate bunch as a whole. Unfortunately, passion will get you through some lean times potentially, but it won't necessarily make you have a successful business. You know, I, I was passionate about barbecue, but it didn't really make a successful business out of it just because I love to do it. Welcome to Drop and Give Me 20, where you learn keys to entrepreneurial success as Lindsay Germono interviews business owners with military backgrounds on what works and what doesn't. Listen as they focus on the stories, both challenges and wins that military entrepreneurs have faced in growing their businesses. Welcome to another episode of Drop and Give Me 20. I am your host, Lindsay Germono. Very excited to have you in as we start off the new year. I am very excited to welcome my next guest, Brian Richardson with The Company Project. So good afternoon to you, Brian. How are you today? I am good, Lindsay. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me on. And second time is a, is a better time, right? Right, right. So um, for those that are listening, let's, let's hear more about your company and what you're doing. Sure. Um, I uh, started the company project after being an entrepreneur for, oh goodness, uh, let's say 25 years or so. Um, I've been involved in the financial services. Uh, I started a business newspaper, uh, did barbecue competitions in a restaurant, and uh, most recently uh, a loss prevention business that's now 15 years old. But I've gotten to a point where I just have the time, uh, ability, and desire to really do something that I'm even more passionate about, and that's helping other small business owners. And the reason that we're recording this a second time is I have uh, even dived down a little further, and I'm focusing on people in the firearms industry, uh, firearms instructors, things like that. So for those that are listening, when Brian and I recorded initially, it was, we just, you know, really kind of went over the company project um, in a introductory capacity. So Brian, you know, how old is the company project? Well, we just started this year. So the the company project itself is is very new. Um, But like I said, I've been in the, when I say in the business, I've been an entrepreneur for for many years. and, and I just, you know, after being an Army veteran before that, uh, I just found that this industry is of interest to me. And I also get to work with other veterans just by nature of the beast. There's a lot of vets that are in the firearms business and uh, gives me an opportunity to help them with some of the skill sets that I feel that I have in uh, starting, building, or growing their business. So you shifted from the company project being for, uh, you know, an organization for businesses. Now you're developing a niche. Can you share with us what that process looked like for you? Yes. Uh, I, I started out and it was, the, the niche was small business owners kind of in general, people that were probably already in business, but still very new. Um, so when I switched that to concentrate more so on the firearms industry, I did that after doing some significant research um, you know, I, I found that there was a lot of people that were getting great opportunities to learn how to train, learn how to be a firearms instructor. There's a lot of support in that world, but I found that there was a gap in the support on how to actually run that business um, once you got trained to, to be a firearms instructor or if you already have been an instructor, how to really manage that uh, business, how to scale it if it's existing. And uh, just everything from the business side of that. Um, so, so that's where I uh, have an expertise on, I feel. Um, I don't do training on how to be an instructor, but more on how to uh, help you build and scale your business. So you use the entrepreneurial side to apply it to this, this niche. Was there a yeah. moment in this past year where you, know, you, were, you went from helping small businesses in general to narrowing it down to this niche? Like, was there some aha moment or, you know, how did that, how did that kind of strike? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was an, totally an aha moment, but when I determined that really getting into a niche, and this is even something that I talk with people about when, when they're building their businesses, is to be able to have that niche that you can really define 
And while I, I have an affinity, affinity for small business owners, that wasn't enough of a niche for me to be able to market it as well as I feel that I can. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when I started doing the research into the firearms industry to see where there might be uh, any gaps uh, that I could fill there. And um, like I said, uh, not with the actual training, but with the business side of things, I felt that there was a gap. And uh, so that's where I'm lending my expertise now. So with your prior time in the Army, and thank you for your service, what – you're welcome. What have you applied that you would you've learned, you know, from your time in the army to today? Well, uh, just my personality alone. Even if I wasn't in the army, uh, I'm sure the army army uh, cemented that a little bit more. It is really knowing some step by step tools, step by step processes to to get a particular task done. So I like that neatness of being able to go through a series of steps to accomplish a goal. Um, So the Army kind of teaches you that. Um, And uh, being uh, an entrepreneur, you have to have that mindset as well, or at least be able to have a place to get it. And that's what I'm helping, hoping to help do. All right. The people that you're working with now, are they, are you seeing that they're either active duty or military spouse or or veterans themselves that are in this firearms industry? Uh, Yes, yes, and yes. (laughs) (laughs) All of the above. (laughs) Um, Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people that are firearms instructors uh, generally are in two two different spheres. One is they have a full-time job, whether that's actual actually being in the military still or just another job. And then they do training um, on the weekends, part-time. And then the other uh, group is people that have already uh, moved into a full-time status, and that's what they do for a living, but maybe they have uh, military or law enforcement background. Do you see any disconnect from them being in the military to now being an entrepreneur? Like, are there personality obstacles in that transition? Uh, I think there's always going to be obstacles. I don't know if it's directly because of being in the military or not. Certainly being in the military can give people, you know, uh, the drive and direction on accomplishing a goal, but that alone doesn't make a successful business. Um, You know, the, the firearms industry is a passionate bunch as a whole. Um, unfortunately, passion will get you through some lean times potentially, but it won't necessarily make you have a successful business. You know, I, I was passionate about barbecue, but it didn't really make a successful business out of it just because I love to do it. Um, so learning the, the ropes, uh, learning the techniques and the tools that are needed uh, to make a successful business in conjunction with your passion, I think is where the, when I say the money, I don't necessarily mean literally the money, but that, that's where the, the, the good stuff happens is the, the uh, intersection of passion and ability. One of the obstacles that we kicked around the last time was understanding how that you've overcome was understanding how business partnerships work. Do you apply that in your niche focus now, either within your business or you know, what you're working with when you're working with others. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, a lot of firearms businesses do have partners. You know, maybe they were originally friends. Um, they said, hey, this really sounds like a good thing to do. Let, let's do this together. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, it, it's just so important to set up the proper partnerships, um, mainly from an expectation point of view, as well as a a duties point of view, you know, who's going to do what, when are they going to do it, how much are they going to get paid to do it, things like that. Those expectations in any partnership, whether it's firearms industry or not, um, are extremely important. And I always stress that people work those things out as early in the game as possible. It can only go downhill if it's not taken care of um, at the beginning because there's a ton of great partnerships out there that work well. Communication is good. And that's where everybody wants to be when they have a partnership. Okay. And we didn't talk about this either. And I, I might be generalizing. I'm, I'm sure I'm generalizing here, <laughs> but when I think of people in the firearms industry, whether they are people that I currently know or just from the 
maybe it's the brand or the awareness part of it of what I see. It seems like a very, you know, alpha driven industry. So when you're talking about these business partnerships, do you see there being any disconnect because you have two, you know, two people of the same kind of build or mindset, or maybe I'm just generalizing and I'm just kind of, you know, throwing this out there <laughs> for no reason. No, I, I think that's certainly a, a distinct possibility. Uh, like I said, because people in the industry again, I'm generalizing, are extremely passionate about what they're doing. They've got to be mindful of a partner if they have one um, or bringing a partner on. You know, And a partner can come in different forms. A partner can be someone that's providing funding only. A partner can be someone that's you know 50-50 in the daily operations of the business. Both of them, I think, are extremely important because at the end of the day, Either kind is still a partner that you have to be accountable to. You have to communicate well with. And if you don't have that, um, then it, it just won't be a good situation. But a lot of people can build that right from the get-go. And again, it starts with expectations, I think. So that's really great. For those that are listening, if they haven't started their own business and they're thinking about this as an industry, what, you know, put your consulting hat on and, and Share with us some advice or tips that you would tell them from, you know, from, from that concept of, I'm going to, this is something I'm really interested in doing. Yeah. I think there's three main things that uh, every business, regardless of industry, needs to have a firm grab, uh, grasp of, and that's to find, motivate, and keep profitable customers, not just customers. Um, because if you don't have profitable customers, um, that's no good either. Um, now, that's very general and very broad, but um, finding your niche, like I am have been working on, and really understanding what it is that people are wanting to buy, you know, what solution, what pain are you solving um, by offering what you do offer, um, really helps you understand the, the customer better and to know where they're coming from, and to know what's important to them. Because if it's not important to them, you might have the, the greatest widget in the world, but if nobody feels a need for it, eh, you know, you've got a hobby probably. Mm-hmm. And then the motivate is the next step there. Yeah, you know, you, once, you, once you find them, um, you, you've got to motivate them. What makes them buy? What makes them buy a second time, a third time, a fourth time? Um, things like that. And, and keeping those profitable customers so that they're happy, so that they're return customers, and so that they might recommend other customers to you. It, it's an ongoing process, uh, again, regardless of your industry, um, to nurture those customers. And, and you have to do that by understanding their needs first. And I'm sure there are a lot of humbling moments in that space, too, because you're also learning as an entrepreneur or a business owner yourself there might be something we could be doing better. I could do this, you know, better to, to, to motivate. So that's, that's a key part. And then that last part, the key customers, I'd love to hear more on, on your area of expertise on that and how that looks. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody has an ugly baby, right? Right. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's very easy to get attached to, um, the way that you do things, the the look of your website, the, the marketing materials that you have, the approach that you use, but being aware of and having the ability to step back, um, get some thoughts and opinions from other professionals is really humbling. It is this difficult for a lot of people, myself included. It, it's hard for someone to say, hey, I don't think, you know, that looks good or you're doing that right or something like that. And it's not about right or wrong. Again, it comes back to what's right or wrong for your customer. What makes them buy something? If doing, you know, something over here on the left makes them buy, but you're over here on the right and it, and it doesn't make them buy. Well, that is wrong. Um, So learn to be flexible in in how you approach things. Um, Learn from others, uh, get input from People in your profession, uh, you know, people like yourself, Lindsay, in advertising, marketing, uh, consulting, uh, strategy, business planning, things like that. That all goes together to uh, to building your business and being successful with it. Because if you only think that what you do is right, well, let's just say that's not going to work out. <laughs> 
sometimes we're too in our business to take a step out and look at it as a whole. And, and that happens. So for, for us, it happens constantly, right? So we're always, I encourage everybody in my team to look at it from how is this looking to people who don't know anything about us? And we've had to go back and edit some things. So it was clear. So I, I love that part of it. And I think it is something that you have to do consistently, right? Because you, you can adapt and pivot quicker and easier instead of three years in going, you know what, we never thought of this. And then your whole game plan changes. So, yeah, uh, I, I think it's important to, to be able to have that understanding of a customer and be able to explain what you do to a potential customer easily. Mm-hmm. You know, you've heard of the elevator spit uh, speech uh, idea where that, you know, you've got to be able to tell somebody what you do why you do it and who you do it for in, you know, three or four sentences or under a minute, you know, what, whatever the operative word is there. Um, it, so, you know, for instance, a lot of people have a website. So if on your website, you can't, people that visit there can't tell what you do specifically, who you do it for. So in other words, are they even in the right place? Should they pay attention to your site and um, how they can buy your, your product? Um, They've got to be able to do those three things right out of the gate, whether it's from a website, whether it's from a discussion or or anything like that. Um, And and making that clear can be difficult, but it's doable. Yeah. I, Oh, I agree. I'm I'm nodding my head in agreement because it's, it has been difficult for us from an advertising and marketing perspective. We help with, you know, really anything and everything, but that's, that's like saying, I mean, it's too, it's too broad, right? So yep. then we get into, well, you know, our, our services are really better for small businesses and, you know, people who um, are kind of under that three-year threshold. So yeah, it's tough because we used to go, yeah, we'll help anybody and everybody. But it, then maybe a year in, it was like, no, we don't do, <laughs> you know, we're, we're kind of yep. going in different directions. So. And, and while you might do multiple things, focusing on one maybe two things specifically that you do the most of, you know, from a marketing perspective um, is going to be key. So you might give 30 different types of firearm classes or courses, but you know, you probably spend the most on one or two market those market to those people, you know, find that persona. And that's a difficult thing I, I've found in the firearms industry for people to say, well, you know, I've got men, I've got women, I've got young, old, um, affluent, you know, the, just a gamut of, of types of people. But I encourage them to go beyond those demographic type of things to more psychographic type of things, which are what do they like to do? What are their opinions? What are their hobbies? Um, things like that, as opposed to just male, female, young, old, uh, things like that. That will really help you guide the type of customer that you have. Wonderful. Uh, I want people to hear how they can get in contact with you, Brian, if they have you know any questions or need more information about the company project. Can you share with us the best way to reach out to you? Definitely. Um, the best way is through the website, and it is thecompanyproject.com. Um, you can also reach out to me on social media. I do a lot on LinkedIn, um, some on Twitter and Facebook, um, but they're all there as The Company Project. Awesome. So thank you so much again for your time today. And I'm very excited about the niche that you're forming for those that are listening. Do reach out to Brian. He's helped me. Uh, we, we, we have, what do we say? We email like every, every week or so, Brian, you and I just like kicking, that, yeah. Around, yeah, kicking around <laughs> ideas. So Brian, I just really want to thank you again for coming on and sharing all of these really great tips and advice to us. I hope that you have a great 2017 and thank you again for all of your time. Thanks you too, Lindsay. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Drop and Give Me 20, brought to you by Germono Advertising Company in Norfolk, Virginia. Please visit our podcast in iTunes, click on subscribe, and leave us a review. Your support goes a long way. When you subscribe and leave reviews, it helps the guests on our show as well. Jump in and let us know what you think. You can also follow all of our guests on the Drop and Give Me 20 Facebook page. We have Instagram and Twitter. Those handles are Give Me 20 Podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Germono, and I appreciate you listening to the show.